Good morning to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is September 11th, 2021. Happy Saturday to you. Let's go over real quickly what we've got out there. Several areas to watch as we move through the weekend and beyond. This down here in the western Gulf of Mexico, southern Gulf, uh, Central America region, Invest Area 94L. And we're going to have to watch this very closely for some impacts up here along the Texas coast over the next few days. Then we have a system here. This is 93L off the coast of Africa. I'm not too worried about this. I think this is going to be what we call a sacrificial lamb, as they say. This will sort of pave the way for another system. If we look at the five-day version of this, that is uh, forecast to emerge from the coast of Africa and become a serious uh, player down the road, potentially impacting maybe the Lesser Antilles, and we're going to have to watch this for the southwest Atlantic later on, perhaps the pattern changing to one that is more favorable for development overall and one where we can have impacts to land areas. And as you can see on the five-day outlook, this is the threat area for the western Gulf system. And while not mentioned yet on the tropical weather outlook, I'm also watching this area of the Atlantic as there is some model agreement that something will try to take shape and move into the direction of the mid-Atlantic states up here over the next few days, so we'll have to watch that as well. A very busy time indeed in the tropics. So looking at the satellite animation this morning, you can see the disturbed weather sitting over here over Central America. Uh, some energy sitting over here. This is very innocuous looking right now, but I think this could come together a little bit more up in this area and eventually be a problem perhaps for somewhere along the mid-Atlantic states, the Carolinas maybe, We'll wait and see uh, about that over time. There's 93L, yeah, kind of um, weak in its overall appearance. I'm not too worried about this one. It's another piece of energy getting ready to come off of Africa that has a very, very strong signal overall, and I'll show you that in just a moment. The vorticity chart for today, this is the area we are watching associated with 94L. And again, not much energy showing up here just yet, but watch what happens over the next couple of days as the models are indicating that something does try to come together there as energy piles up in the southwest Atlantic. There's 93L, and the other system is over Africa. We'll wait a couple more days before we see that showing up on the vorticity signature. And by the way, I can draw off the edge of the map onto it. There is the uh, remnants there of Olaf, which of course made landfall in the Cabo San Lucas area a couple of days ago. That's still hanging out there in the eastern Pacific. And that right there, my friends, is Larry. Still a hurricane rapidly transitioning to post-tropical, as we call it. And it'll head up towards Greenland up here, where it'll bring the potential for several feet of snow. Believe it or not, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? All right, so here is a very interesting chart. This is the 10-day uh, all cyclones from the Ensemble Prediction System. That's what that three letters there, EPS. This is from the Euro. And you can see these distinct clusters. There's 94L. A little bit of a reflection here of that Southwest Atlantic System that I was mentioning. A very bold signal right there for a system that's still over Africa. That has yet to come out. This is 93L and then maybe even another system after that. And this is a mid-latitude uh, extratropical cyclone. doesn't really count for tropical systems. So you get the idea that the ensemble members, 51 members here from the Euro, really lighting things up over the next several days, uh, t 10 days or so. So we're going to have to watch that you know, everywhere very, very closely. In the Gulf, one of the main concerns here, yes, something could come up here and develop and become a depression or a tropical storm and bring some coastal flooding impacts and wind impacts. That's two out of the three main hazards. The other is the fact that we have all this very warm water, 30 degrees Celsius or higher, and that equates to very high precipitable water levels. And you look at the fact that the uh, water temperatures are running above the long-term average by uh, about a degree Celsius there. So that's pretty substantial. That's a lot more energy, a lot more water vapor, and a lot more available water to ring out, right? And so some of the ensemble uh, members here and the forecasting showing the potential for very, very heavy rain exactly where this sets up. 
remains to be seen. You know, Houston sits right up here, and that's a very large area that's prone to flooding. Uh, and so we got to watch this very, very closely and see how it evolves. It's a complex setup. You get any of these big rain bands that comes in, tremendous instability, and you can get a lot of rain over a particular area. We don't know where that's going to happen yet. And maybe it really isn't that bad, but it's something we have to watch. You know the history of flooding in southeast Texas, and uh, so we have to pay attention to this very, very closely over the coming days. All right, that'll about do it from me for this morning. I'll have more uh, on the Hurricane Track website, on the little mini blog I post there, of course, on social media, Twitter and Facebook. And then this being on YouTube, you know, subscribe, like, and share. Good to have you watching. Uh, I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.